Right, so here I am at the fairy village. I was just watching um, a video of that rabbi, Dr. Rabbi um, Abraham, a person. I will include it um, in the description. Very, very clever. Very, very clever what they were saying. But very, very true, so true. Um, one point that he's made is something similar to what I've said on the video before, so I'm just going to uh, talk about that a bit. Um, he was basically saying that if you look at all the animals, all the animals, all the insects were made complete. All they had to do was grow. Yeah, everything was already put in there. You know, put into that understanding. Like I was saying the other day about spiders. Baby spiders are born knowing how to do this. They don't need to be taught. You never see big spider, little spider, with a big spider teaching baby spider how to do it. They just know. You know, generally speaking, you know, baby creatures in you know, Africa, they know. Baby animals, they know. To flee from the big animals, they know that. Naturally, it's in there. They know. They don't need to be told by mum that, oh, this is dangerous. Be careful. Domesticated. And there can be issues with that because, because they're domesticated, they trust everything. You know, their nature has been sort of yeah, pushed out of them, isn't it, really, through domestication. But they're natural, the understanding, natural in there. Everything they need to live and to thrive is all in there already. With humans, that just isn't the case. With humans, we're supposed to grow, we're supposed to develop. We're supposed to learn. Animals, generally speaking, pretty terrible at learning. Yeah, isn't it a case, you know, with collies and other types of dogs that can learn pretty quickly? Don't we marvel at that? The reason why we marvel at that is because this is an animal doing that. What they've learned is incredibly basic for humans, right? Incredibly basic for humans. But for an animal, that's incredible. The problem is we never seem to think about that. We never seem to think that... Well, we marvel because that's an animal. That basic is a stupid animal that's learned to do that, which is quite impressive, really. I mean, most people have dogs, and their dogs could never do anything like that, right? So when you see a border collie herding sheep, you're going, wow. Because you look at your dog and you think, no. <laughs> no, that dog's brilliant. No, it's not the dog, it's the owner. The owner, the people that train the dog, they've done a fantastic job. They have to spend time training that dog because the natural of the dog isn't to do any of that at all. None of it. It's not there, it shouldn't be there. Natural is to her, like Gracie. Gracie runs around. Chewy runs around. That's part of their natural. So therefore, people have taken it and oh, actually, yeah. A dog that runs around, okay, just keeps running around, a loop around the area. That's good for a herding. Oh yeah, I want I want to get these sheep from there to there. So if I can get the dog to just run around a bit rather than completely, so you have to go against the natural nature of the dog, like Gracie. With Gracie, Gracie wouldn't no good as a sheep dog because she just kept on running round and round and round. I imagine that's what she still does. So therefore, I imagine that's a problem because. That's natural to her as a dog and to that type of dog. That's what they do. They're designed by God to do that. They don't know any better. She's doing simply what she's designed to do. That's it. Yeah, she has no idea why she's doing it, necessarily. She's just doing it. Whether she's doing it because it's fun, I have no idea. But when you then train a dog, you're training that out of them. See, with humans, we're supposed to want knowledge. We're supposed to want to gain understanding. We're supposed to have a purpose in life. But as Dr. Abraham was saying, the problem is, is that, you know, what we have created for us in society is what the people in the 1930s would have, consist, would have considered as as close to paradise as you could possibly get. We've got it all, everything. That's why I've done videos saying about the fact of the hopelessness and the fact that we seem to have everything that we could have possibly want. We've got it already, haven't we? 
Yeah, that's the problem. We've got it all already. If we've got it all already, what can we even hope for? A new iPhone? Yeah, a new car? Maybe move to a new house? Yeah. That's what we've got, isn't it? Really? That's, that's all we're looking for. That's the pursuit of pleasure. There are monetary things, things of monetary value that we look at as our pursuit of pleasure. That's not what we're supposed to be doing because, as Dr. Abraham says, animals, all they can do is pursue pleasure. That's why rabbits are uh, bonking all day long. Because it's pleasurable. And why stop? It's pleasurable. You know, we've got humans that are doing that. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. You've got you know, certain creatures, birds certainly, that are very good at sort of uh, prancing around, showing everyone what they've got. Certainly women, oh yeah, to try and attract a mate. Yeah. Do, don't you see that every Friday and Saturday night? In your local towns. See the women doing exactly the same as these birds are doing. They're looking at nature and they're copying nature rather than thinking, well hold it, we're designed for a better purpose than it. Yeah. There's all these things that animals can't do that, that we can do. Yeah. But even their whole emotional we've got that, they haven't. We've got all that we got, all that we're made different is for a purpose. We're not yeah, the missing it, we didn't come from apes. That's complete rubbish. Apes are like any animal, they're complete. They're built, designed, complete, job done. They know exactly what the purpose is from moment of. Yeah, they first are and they, then they die. They have one purpose. Then the purpose of most animals, pleasure, food. Yeah. So and I, basically. <laughs> Keep the species alive. So food and sex, food, sex, drink, that's it. So for them it's just water, it's not alcohol. Poor apes. They can't even get alcohol. That's the point. Have they developed anything like that? Have they learned how to make alcohol? Have they learned how to make proper housing? To cut down these sort of things. Have they learned to do that? To make axes? No, because they weren't designed for that purpose. They were completed. They have no desire to learn. The desire to learn is by us interfering. And when we interfere and we show a reward step, that if they do this, they get that, they don't care about what else they do, they just want that. They may learn something, they're, they're going to forget that pretty quickly. They don't care about that. All they care about is a reward. Yeah? yeah. We've got to get to the understanding that we're called for a purpose. And if we're called for a purpose, what is that purpose? Yeah, we're not called to... Pursue pleasure. Because you get to a point where you've got everything you want, you say, well, what now then? Yeah, that's why there's a massive hole in people, because uh, what's now? We, we've got that. Now, now what do we do? Yeah, to pursue much more pleasure, we've got to earn probably a 100,000 times what we're earning now. Yeah, because how are we going to buy a yacht? How are we going to buy an island if we're just doing a normal job? Yeah, we can't do that. So, pursuit of pleasure ends abruptly once we've got everything, you know. Once you've got a place to live, once you've got children, once you've got husband, wife, once you've got phone, once you've got car, once you've got, you know, a holiday once a year maybe. Pursuit of happiness, done. I say, you compare what you've got now to people. Yeah, go to 1930s, go back further. Yeah, if you went back to their time and they come back to here... You would be astounded and so would they. They would think they'd gone to another visiting planet. They just wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't recognise it at all. You could bring them here. Yeah, you could bring someone who was born in this area, raised in this area, say they got to 40. Bring them here. Tell them that people now, compared to those days, people now expected to live at least up until about 80. Of course, in those days, it was about, what, 50? If you're lucky, yeah. The further you go back, the younger the, the 
level of expectation of age. When you're going to die with me, it just keeps them going lower, 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 the further back you go. Our pursuit of happiness has given us a work environment that's really comfortable if you compare it to working environments in the past. Our communications is immediate now. Never used to be that. But now we've got absolutely immediate communications. Travel is so quick now. So much more easy. You jump into your own vehicle rather than have to share a blinking um, carriage with you know, six other smelly people. One second, got person there. Right. Well, give me an example. Those two dogs. Well, the younger one is six months old, Springer. And so what does it do? It lives up to its name, bouncing everywhere. Yeah. Bounce, 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 bounce. Jumping up and bouncing around. Yeah. Its nature is there. It's in there. Doesn't need any training. I say, we, we're different. We're supposed to be searching. We're supposed to realise what we're called to be. We're supposed to be walking in that. But no, the pursuit of pleasure seems to be the thing that we're all going for. But yeah. Yep. Well, that's why you've got people that are obese. And that's why you've got people that are, yeah, doing all this OnlyFans crap. It's because of the fact... Money produces pleasure, food produces pleasure, drugs produces pleasure. And the incredible short term, I mean the damage they, they create is far, far worse. But there is a desire for pleasure, isn't there? There's a desire for that hit of pleasure from heroin or cocaine or, you know. Pursuit of pleasure. Incredibly dangerous. Because you can't find any pleasure there, not really. It's fleeting. Whatever pleasure you can find is fleeting. The most natural pleasure that we and animals can share is sex. But even sex is that, yeah, you have a certain amount of pleasure and then you have... Okay. <laughs> it's like, we've done that, what next? <laughs> yeah. Afterwards, it, the pleasure, just generally speaking, doesn't prolong, does it? You know, for hours and 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 hours. If it did, then it would be a far better thing for everyone concerned. Both, by everyone, both. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. We could do better with regard to that. I think we could do better. I do. And certainly, well, as I've said with regard to the sex, I think people can do better in their relationships. But, that's for them to figure out between them and God. Um, we've got to realise that, yeah, we weren't left here just to get on and do. We're not animals. We're supposed to be far better than that. We're supposed to be far more advanced than that. Yeah, that's why in the 60s they, they built a rocket, they went to the moon. Because Animals can't do that. Yeah, birds can fly. They still can't fly to the moon, can they? Right? They're still limited. But they can't build a big rocket, can they? Even like the other day in Manchester, you see the, the trams going along. You've got trams going on with cars, walkers and cyclists. They're all roaming around the town. It's... It's a feat of man. Animals can never do that. No, I don't think necessarily trams are suitable for every town. I think trams are... I don't get why they've got trams. If you've got buses, why do you need trams, really? I mean, that's just an identity thing. But, OK. It's to their own, I suppose, but, yeah. Well, trams... Buses can at least turn. Trams, generally speaking, they're on a rail. They can't really go anywhere other than where the rail was taken. So incredibly limited. It's like going back to a time when, you know, horse-drawn carts and stuff like that. It's limited. Yeah, at least they can turn, but they can't go very fast. 
You got limited. Just get in a car, get in a bus, get on a bloody train. Yeah? Yeah. We, to a certain degree, I think we've come forward so much that there is a desire for people to go backwards a little bit. Yeah. Because things maybe seem a bit simpler. Like even trams. Trams go quite slowly. Compared to buses, compared to trains. So you can relax a bit more on one of those. I suppose that, that may be part of the attraction to it. You know, been on one? Oh, I have, but not um, for a very long time when I was a kid. I went on one in Holland. Um, and they're fine. I wouldn't necessarily recommend them to every city, but they're fine. What's the answer, really? I'm not really sure what the answer is. I went out to church the other day. There was a there was a point of saying um, the Afghan situation. There's a local shop just around the corner here who are doing a collection for the people because you've got a lot of Afghan people that are going to be coming into this town here um, to be helped. Um, but they're looking for collections of things like food, clothing, uh, toiletries, plus mobile phones. And while I was in there, I was thinking, well, Lord, I was thinking about upgrading or getting another phone. But if I get another phone, I'm going to be buying it right. So if I had the money to do that, why not? If I had the money to do it, that's the point. I mean, right now, I don't necessarily have the money. But if I did, why not just buy 20 phones that are decent enough? that can be given to these people, or people like this. Yeah. Get 20 phones for your money rather than just one. So do I particularly need an upgrade? No, not really. I mean, this phone I'm using now is the most recent phone. This is far better than the, one, the other one I used, the S8 Plus. Far better, even though the, the video is far better. So, I imagine that the upgrade would be even better than this one. But. Am I bothered by it particularly? No. No. If you people watching are bothered by the video quality not being good enough and thinking that maybe I should upgrade to another phone, then send me the money for it. Right. But stipulate that has to be to get the S20 Plus or whatever. Or S21 Plus or 22 Plus. I'm not sure what's coming out soon. Whatever that one is, yeah. And then the money that I'm given through other means can be used to buy the 20 phones for these people. Right. There you go. Deal. As I said, look, I mean, that's just an example. That's just what I was thinking the other day. That may not happen. Well, because I might not have the money to be able to do that anyway. Because obviously, if you're looking for the money to do it, you're looking at nearly, probably nearly two thousand um, pounds of spare money. Not just money you've got, but spare money. Money that you don't need to spend on anything else. And you need to know you've got plenty of other money available if you have issues with cars or something. So you're talking completely spare money. So am I going to have that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Maybe not. I. Yeah. But we're supposed to have a purpose, folks. We're not supposed to be like the insects or the birds or you know, the creatures that roam around. We're not supposed to be like that. We weren't designed the way they were. We weren't designed completely. Yeah? That's the thing. We were designed to be completed over a period of time. Yeah? The problem is we've got led astray. Because of course, the, um, the whole idea of, of happiness is based on us buying stuff. So it really is encouraged a lot by the people selling to us, isn't it really? They really want us to focus on a pursuit of happiness because it serves their purposes. They get to sell more crap to us. And it is just crap, it's stuff we just throw away after a while. Yeah. Nothing's built to last, is it, really? So, it's built to be a place. That's why 
Your phone companies bring out a new phone every year, don't they? Because there's a lot of people that just upgrade every year. Yeah. Yeah. So with cars, people buy cars and they know that you know the warranty is given because the car's expected to be okay for a few years and then it's expected that things will start to go wrong. That's gonna cost you more money. Yeah. So therefore, if you've got the money, you'll, you'll get a new one, won't you? You'll get rid of that thing and get a new one. They know that. It's designed for that. It's even worse if you're at the lower end of the market, certainly for cars. You buy a car simply to get around for a while, knowing that um, at any point in time it could go kaboom boom Because that's the thing with older cars. All the cars could always just go ka pum pum And for no reason whatsoever. Just you drive it, suddenly ka pum pum Yeah, things are dead in it. It's electrical. With electrical stuff, so many things can happen. I think it's quite likely with the um, Mercedes, it could just be a fuse. It could just be something as simple as a fuse, or maybe the, the AC needs cleaning out, or I don't know what I mean. Look, I've got no idea about cars, or I don't know what the AC is necessarily, or... Not, it's not the air conditioner, what's it called? ABS, ABS for me. Maybe it's a fuse, maybe it's the ABS needs a bit of um, attention. Yeah. You never know. It was working fine, then all of a sudden, not. So, um, I mean, apparently it had all the checks that went through its MOT, but also it was checked up on a yearly basis to work as a taxi, so... Yeah, apparently they go through incredibly stringent checks, so, yeah. Hopefully it won't cost too much to fix, because I don't have the money to fix it, so, yeah. All for fun for, for and games. It's, yeah. We've got to get to understanding what we're called to do, because, look, I've been sort of flippant about the situation, sort of. Um, folks, in the end, if the Bible is true, that there is a heaven, that there is a hell. Yeah, the absolute horrendousness of being led away from your purpose into a life of pursuit of happiness then to be faced with that judgment on the day you die and to be sent to an eternity in hell. Why? Simply because you didn't repent. Not because of what you did, it's got nothing whatsoever to do with what you're doing. Yeah? And say that the only sin that's unforgivable is when you're blasphemed against the Holy Spirit. That's it. I talked about that one a bit yesterday. But all the rest you can repent of. The only thing that's going to stop people from going to heaven is that they haven't repented. Simple. And that's insane. It's insane. But for your own sake, certainly, the pursuit of happiness with regards to all the things we are looking for in happiness, or things we've been trying to find in happiness, it's only going to lead to, lead to misery and hopelessness. That's what it's going to do in the end. Because it's not all these people that are changing their bodies to go with the current image. They're going to have incredibly expensive surgery on butt lifts and all this sort of stuff. You know? If fashion then changes to a simmer butt is what's now fashionable, think of the horror that these people are going to go through. They spent all that money, all that money, having all that stuff done, they've got to raise a load of money to get it all taken out again. Oh, jeez. Tell, wasn't it? How people have face work done and boobs done and stomach done and, yeah. You have men that pump crap into their arms to make them look muscular. Oh, trying to chase an image. They, they don't really want to work for it, they just want to chase it. They just want to sort of find an easy way 
because it's the pursuit of happiness. And the pursuit of happiness, what you, what, is it the journey of happiness? No, pursuit. What does pursuit mean? It's a chase, isn't it? Yeah? A journey isn't a chase. Now, when I'm walking around here, this is more of a journey, isn't it? I'm going at a nice leisurely pace. That's what a journey is. It's a, it's a wandering, really. You're going to be patient if you're pursuing happiness. You're not going to want to spend all that time going to the gym. You're creating that body. A lot of people just don't have the time anyway, you know. So they go for the quick fix. So that quick fix means surgery. It means you're cutting into your own body. And I don't care really. It doesn't matter how many times people have surgery. It doesn't matter even that they've been doing it for 20 years. It still looks quite terrible. When people have these surgeries, they still look weird. They do. It doesn't look natural in any way, shape or form. It looks completely unnatural. And then that's the people that have the more extreme ones. There are people that would have you know, little bits of work done that, that yeah, can improve them. I'm not saying plastic surgery is completely wrong. It isn't. There are purposes where plastic surgery is fantastic. Yeah, if you get someone who's been in an accident or a fire where their face is damaged and it can improve that, wouldn't it? Just fantastic. That is just beautiful. We need more of that. We need less of the other crap. Yeah? If someone's had cancer and they've had to have a breast removed, you're having a sort of, yeah, boob job, brilliant. Yeah? If it helps that person to deal with the, the horror of what they've gone through, and to help them to recover quicker, brilliant, fantastic, keep doing that. That's beautiful. Yeah, helping people to heal, helping people to move forwards in their life, fantastic, do that. All the rest of the stuff, please, man. All the rest of the stuff is a pursuit of happiness. And those surgeons that are pushing this crap, just go and sell an iPhone. Just go and sell a car, just, you know, go and do that. Go and sell a Tesla, there you go. The ultimate pursuit of happiness is a Tesla because it means you've got all that money, you can afford to buy a Tesla, you can drive around showing off your Tesla. Right? Go and do that. Yeah? Far less damaging to people. Anyway, I'm going to travel down shortly to meet with Stuart. Not yet, because clearly, um, he wanted to meet half an hour later today than what we normally meet, so that wasn't helpful. <laughs> but I'm going to stop this video. I may have another walk around. <laughs>